Okay, so this is just a, a quick summary of a uh, technique that was developed by uh, a graduate student of mine, Prantik Kundu. And uh, basically I provided him initially with some multi-echo data, some multi-echo time series data, and he developed this pipeline for uh, removing all the non-bold signal. So it resulted in so far two papers that uh, were published, one in NeuroImage, one in PNAS. And the basic concept behind this is that with bold blood oxidation level dependent signal changes, the percent signal change goes up with echo time. So we collect multi-echo EPI or multi-echo fMRI, um, echo planar imaging is our acquisition in which we, uh, uh, in this case, it's three echoes, and we just look at the TE dependence. And if the, and we break the signal, the time series, down into ICA components. And if those ICA components show an echo time dependence, we keep them, they're considered good. And if they don't show an echo time dependence, they don't fit to this model that we create, they're bad. And we either remove them or we use that signal from those bad components as regressors in which we can then regress out uh, the noise from the time series. So here's the basic idea. You have uh, uh, in this for in this case we have bold signal changes. Here's the initial decay, uh, and then you suddenly have uh, with activation only the exponential time constant uh, changes, whereas the intercept doesn't change. Nothing else changes. With non-bold, uh, other things can change. The intercept, uh, and this may not show an echo time dependence, it might be noise. In this case, with bold signal changes, there's an echo time dependence. So in, in practice, it looks something like this. These are the images, and these are the time series. This is color-coded red, green, and blue here. Uh, echo time one, two, and three, and separated by TR, and so on. Uh, so we can do this very efficiently with multi-echo uh, EPI. And here's what the data look like. These are the ICA components that we, we basically concatenate the uh, three images into uh, one and we make a time series of that. We make ICA components. We find all the ICA components and then we look at whether they show an echo time dependence. Uh, and what we can see is, uh, in this case, this is looking at a, a region from the default mode network, it does. So we keep that component as a good component. Okay? And Bad ones, we, th we either throw away or regress out. And here's an example. So here is uh, a good component in which uh, we can actually take all your ICA components, all our ICA components. In this case, we started with 40. We sort them based on the goodness of fit to the model, to our TE-dependent model. And the ones that fit very well uh, are high up on this curve. And there always seems to be this elbow, and it just plateaus out. These are all the bad components. Here's an example of the bad component uh, here. It just does this sort of thing. Uh, in this case, um, this is noise. This is motion, clear motion. And uh, it it's shows up here. And here we can actually eyeball and see that it's a artifact. But this algorithm actually does this automatically. So there's no user intervention here that's necessary. So here are all the good components. They all look uh, pretty real. Um, and here are an example of some of the bad components. And so we suddenly shifted it down from like 55 components down to about 15 or 16. So here are the bad ones, you can see the motion. So, like I mentioned, you can do a couple of things with this. You can just keep the good components right here, or you could use the signal from the bad components as regressors such that we can regress out the time series signal. If we want to go back and analyze and do more analysis on our time series, we can regress out the signal this way uh, by taking this, the time series from each of these ICA components and regressing it out. So here is an example of that. This is first the raw time series in which um, uh, nothing is changed, nothing is regressed out. This is the, well at least the, this is subtract, the mean is subtracted off of this. So you can see basically essentially a time series of different images. And what you see from this is things that look like they could be suggestive, but nothing really obvious. It's still a lot of non-bold noise that tends to dominate this. 
Okay, so the second time series is just uh, the uh, noise time series, the ones that were considered non-bold. This is just the noise time series. And there you see, it looks even less natural than that, of course. It's, uh, you see this, this like maybe strange artifact that drifts across the image. You see some other things, but clearly there's nothing that looks very suggestive here. And this time series was actually taken uh, from uh, by after regressing out these bad time series from this time series. So this is the bold, purely all the fluctuations here show a good fit to our T dependence curve. And yes, while you might have some potential still respiration artifacts and things like that, what you can see through this though, much more clearly, is what looks like spontaneous neural activity just occurring. So you can see the default mode network pop up right um, uh, in a second here. There's a default mode network. You can see, or especially there, right there is a default mode network. You can see temporal lobes becoming activated. You can see some parietal or frontal areas becoming active. Uh, and you see basically this oscillation across networks uh, showing activation. And there's no additional processing other than regressing out the non-bold signal from the time series. So we didn't do a sliding window correlation or anything like that. This is just raw uh, time series with the noise regressed out. Okay, that pretty much summarizes this. So this, we think this technique is, is really effective. It's relatively easy to implement. Most scanners have multi-echo capability. And the pipeline is basically just breaking into ICA components and then seeing which ones fit and don't fit. There's other ways of actually achieving this, um, but uh, this I think is, is one of the more effective uh, approaches. So, and if we, we would like to actually ultimately apply this in real time, so we can in real time then see spontaneous neural activity going on, uh, as shown in the right movie. Okay. That is about it.